All right, so it's December 31st, 2020. Who would have thought we would have experienced a year like we have in 2020 a year ago? No one, except for, well, maybe a handful. This year has been monumental. It has been a game changer. I mean, think about it. The last time we had a pandemic was in 1918 with the Spanish flu. We didn't wear masks up until nine months ago. The world is greatly changed and we have been a part of it, good or bad. And this year, stock markets have hit all time highs, fundamentals out the door for a lot of companies, but we have seen a major shift from the old world to the new world. The move from the, the general electrics of the world to the zooms of the world. Technology has driven this year by a long amount, enormous amount. Companies are up thousand percent based on where the world is changing. The EV stocks, electric vehicle stocks have skyrocketed based on the new world, the new movement. It's, it's insane and it just reminds me so much, so much of the tech bubble and the housing bubble and every other bubble. When people get so crazy and just fanatical about this a movement, if it's if it's the electric vehicle or uh, uh, new uh, the new energy movement or the outlawing of combustion engine cars or just stay at home and work forever from your home. The world has greatly changed and it has accelerated because of COVID. Now, things have been great for sure totally great. Markets have hit all time highs and continue to today hitting all time highs. But at some point, money starts to run thin and we start to see the flow of money starting to thin out. And I believe as we enter the new year, we'll have some good, but we're also going to have some bad. In this video, I'm going to hit upon the three things that I believe will drive the market to retract or retrace. Now, first and foremost, I want to express this is my opinion. This is, these are not recommendations. This is what I believe could happen. Um, and so you need to manage your money based on your risk tolerance. You need to gather, do your own research. This is merely educational and it's in my opinion only. Also, would you please hit the subscribe button and the notifications because I really like to grow my channel and help educate you more and more. So if, please hit that like button if you like this video and subscribe in the, for, so that you can receive notifications of new videos that I put out in the future. All right, my first reason that I believe we're about to see sometime in the next 90 days, a 10 plus percent pullback off the highs as of today. Number one is the fundamental price to earnings ratio, the Schiller price to earnings ratio of the S&P 500 is presently 33.5. Historically, it's about 16.75 or so. So we're double what the average of the Schiller PE ratio for the S&P 500 is. This means companies are overbought, overvalued. You can go look at the different, um, the different PE ratios of the companies within the S&P 500. I'll use Tesla as an example since, since they're brand new to the S&P 500. They've got a PE ratio of like 1300. That's like astronomical. That's like I'm paying the price for that stock uh, when it should be in, in 1300 years from now, what it should be priced at. It's, it's a lot of speculation. It's a lot of basically, you know, uh, growth, uh, potential growth in the company. But is it th a PE ratio of 1300? And I know, I know most people look at it and go, yeah, but look at what they're doing. I mean, their market cap value, value is all, is more than the collective of all the major car manufacturers. I mean, that's 
That's meaning that company, Tesla, is worth more than Toyota? Well, how many cars do you see versus Teslas versus uh, to Toyota cars on the road when you're driving down the road? I still have a problem with that PE ratio. And that new, P, that new entry in the S&P 500 is causing the S&P 500 to be valued at a higher rate, along with the Apples and the other companies within the S&P 500. This S the Schiller PE ratio of 33.5, I believe it's just so astronomical. At some point, it's going to retrace. And that's where I look at the S&P 500 retracing about 10% off the highs as of today if that that would be just a good fundamental sound retracement a profit taking a reorganization of of your portfolio in the 20 in january of 2021 it would just make sense that we see a 10 percent pullback if we see more it means the s p is really rich and i believe you're going to see a rotation throughout 2021 from high tech to more different types of sectors in the coming year. And a lot of it has to do with the relationship between the dollar and stocks and sectors. All right, my second reason why I think the, we're gonna see a pullback in all the major indexes is because of the locking down of states and telling people to stay home and not go out shutting restaurants down, shutting public areas down, and telling people to not go out and spend money. California, Ohio, I believe North Carolina is another state that has all said, stay at home, don't go out, wear masks everywhere you go. Uh, along with other states requiring the mandate of uh, mask wearing, uh, shutting down businesses. I believe this is a major major reason why in the coming months we will see that pullback on the indexes of 10 plus percent. It's that whole adrenaline high thing. You think about the last 12 months. We have been on an adrenaline high. We've been running hard. We have stimulus money that came into the uh, marketplace, to people's houses. We've seen companies get uh, the PPP loans. We've just been pumping adrenaline into the heart of the patient. And now we're getting to a point where, yes, we got another $600 stimulus package, but we're not fundamentally supporting or financially supporting the businesses. More and more businesses are going out of business because they can't do business, in particular the restaurant industry. Along with the retail industry, we are spending more money online versus in store. And you can look at retail sales between November and October, uh, and you can see that drop. Now, as we get into the comparison between December and November, we'll probably see more shopping done online versus in store, which it's a, it's just a trickle down effect. It is, if I'm not, don't have my doors open so you can shop or come into my restaurant and spend money there, you're, that trickles down to, uh, well, I can't pay my, my rent which means if I can't pay my rent, the landlord can't pay his loan, which affects the bank who lent them the money to build the building so that the, uh, the restaurant or the retail uh, outlet uh, can have a store. Well, it's all trickle down. And I believe that trickle down effect is being postponed a lot because of the PPP loan, because of the $600 stimulus packages. But at some point, this will come to rest and we will see the, the nitty gritty and the insolvency situation of businesses start to come to the surface. Now, will they kick it down the road for the next six months under the Biden administration? I bet they will. And that's where when I see the markets really coming down hard, it'll be in the second half of this year. Just based on fundamentals, just based on the uh, closing of businesses or the can or closing of states in a lot of places, I believe you're going to see that another reason is that shutting down of the country in a sense and Stopping people from spending money will be another reason why the S&P and other indexes will pull back and retrace 10 plus percent.
of their off their highs. All right, so for my third one, my third reason why we'll see a pullback happens to be the reaction of people that I work with and the upcoming Tuesday um, runoff in Georgia. I had a conversation today with a client, wants to liquidate everything on Monday, um, put it in cash, take the profits we've made for him this year, send them to him, and then start working from the uh, principal capital that we, we started out with. The biggest driver for his decision making is the Tuesday uh, runoff in Georgia. If everything goes Democrat, he's freaked out. The Biden administration doesn't like Wall Street. They don't like stocks. They want to tax every transaction. They want to implement different estate planning taxes. They want to uh, get rid of capital, long-term capital gains taxes. I mean, the amount of money they could generate from all those taxing and ridding of estate uh, taxes the, or restructuring of estate taxes could generate billions and trillions of dollars. But what it does is it kills the American worker who has been saving in his 401k and that every time he contributes to that 401k, they tax that, they, they tax it, that transaction. Well, if you're getting paid every week, if you're working on the line and working in a factory and you get paid every week and you're making a contribution six plus percent or whatever you're putting into your 401k and you get taxed on that, that's another amount you have to make. Uh, more over and above to make money in the markets. I look at the Biden administration and I just hope, I just hope that his campaign about re basically reorganizing the financial system in our country is just, well, it's just words for him to get reelected. You know, oftentimes a lot of stuff they talk about when they're running for office never really happens. And in this case, I hope that's the case. The combination of the, ele um, the runoff on, uh, on Tuesday uh, in Georgia and the potential where that's going to swing to, along with the Biden administration's goals and or what they say they're going to do, could really put a big damper on the, on Wall Street, on, on stocks and bonds and every other uh, derivative and currency and all that. And as we continue to see the U.S. dollar devalue over and over and the, most likely the printing of more money and the devaluation, we're going to start seeing inflation. In the end, this is where risk management comes into play. You have to have a risk management strategy. You have to become active. In the environment we're in, you have to be a, a active participant in managing your portfolio. We are no longer in a passive uh, indexed market anymore and probably won't be for a while. Those days will come again where you can just throw your money in the S&P 500. But with the volatility and the amount of money flowing in and out, I mean, I, was, I saw a chart or a chart in the Wall Street Journal about margin levels are at all time highs. Margin is when you borrow money and you buy stocks along with your principal value to get a bigger return. All right, in closing, I hope you have weathered 2020 well. I hope you have found uh, new reasons to go into the new year to better yourself and create that ideal lifestyle, that living loud lifestyle. But as we enter 2021, make sure you're properly risk managing your portfolio and your investments and your life in the right way. Because in the end, you always want to be able to show up the next day to play the game.